Good evening, everyone. I'm Lucy Gray, and I'm in Northbrook, Illinois. It's about 9 o'clock at night in uh, the Midwest. And I'm very excited to introduce to you tonight my friend Lori Rowe, who is a fellow Apple Distinguished Educator. And if you're not familiar with this program, it is a, an award program that Apple, um, Apple gives this, distinguished, this distinct, distinction to teachers every two years and the program has grown globally. Um, there's probably a couple thousand teachers now who've gone in this award, about 50 teachers in each region get it every year or every other year. And I first met Lori when I became an AD in 2005 and I believe she was one before I was. And in 2006, we went to Europe on a trip that changed our, our lives, I think it's fair to say. We went with Apple to write a global awareness curriculum in, um, we went to Berlin and we went to Prague. And uh, as a result of that, I came back and started this community that now is the Global Education Conference Network. And a couple of years later, Steve joined in and we started the conference. Um, but I think our big takeaway from, and Lori will talk to this, I'm sure, I think our big takeaway was the power of technology to connect people across borders. Um, and I think we both felt compelled that we needed to do something uh, with our lives that related to this monumental trip for us. So um, so this is Lori, she is a, a technology coordinator in Delaware and she's been doing some amazing work um, with her district and her state and without further ado, I, I, well actually I'm going to take you through one more thing. Um, I'm going to introduce you to her, I, I've introduced you to her and now we're going to get going even further down the line here. We want to thank our supporters, uh, Participate has been a stalwart uh, supporter of ours for a number of years and we have a, several new ones this year as well. Make sure that you check out the websites of our sponsors, follow them on Twitter, show them some love um, for supporting us in what they're doing um, and what we're doing. Make sure you also look at our game that is um, posted on the front page of our website. It is from Aludo and it's a professional development game that you can play in conjunction with the conference in order to get a conference certificate. So thanks to everyone who supported us. Now I'm going to enable the whiteboard privileges and this is an activity that we do with every session. There are tools to the left of the whiteboard and you'll see one that looks like a star. It's the second one down and you're going to take that and you're going to click and show us where you are in the world. So everybody should be able to use the whiteboard and do that. The tools, there's a, there's a row of column of tools to the left of the whiteboard and it's the second one down. It should look like a little star. You can't see it, Barbara? Hmm. I have them enabled. I did. Really? You would think after all these years I would know how to do this. Maybe I just gave it to a few people. No, I can't do it. I, oops, nope, that's not where we want to go. There we go. You see it now? You guys are good? All right. Yay. Look at all those dots pop up all over the world. In the chat, can you tell us specifically where you're at so we can marvel at this global gathering? I'm in outside Chicago, USA, Illinois, Chicago, where I have Guam. Phoenix, Arizona, Tampico, Mexico, Red Deer, Alberta, Canada, Lyons, Colorado, Oakland, California, Dallas, north of Chicago. I'm north of Chicago too, Malia. I'm in uh, Northbrook. Romania, Nepal, another another person in Mexico, Salt Lake. Great. We're, it's pretty late and now I see Nashville too. I miss Nashville. And central Illinois. Yay, Illinois is representing tonight. Um, so what's interesting about this is that we still, in Delaware, another Delaware person um, in Virginia, yeah, some people are, are, are truly global citizens and live everywhere. Um, so anyway, this, uh, Lori, will give you an idea that our, our participants are coming from all over, the, all over the place. It's a little bit late in the U.S., but for other time zones, this is actually probably a more friendly time to come to the conference than any. So. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to advance to the next slide and turn off the whiteboard privileges and um, keep the chatter going in the 
Hit us up, please. Um, Lori, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us. We're really looking forward to interacting with you, and I'll be keeping track of questions and that sort of thing. And uh, and uh, let me know when you're ready to hear them if if if, uh, if we have time. Thanks for coming tonight. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you so much, and welcome, everyone. I am thrilled to be here, and I'm so thrilled to have you all here tonight. I'm just going to just turn the video on for a second just so you can see me live, and then I'm going to turn it back off and actually get started. I'm really excited because I see some friends out there, um, and I have some students coming in who have been part of the program. It's late here on the East Coast. It's a school night, so I'm, I'm going to introduce them early, but I do want to get started. So let me turn my video off, and I have, I'm just excited to share. Oh, Lauren made it. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Lauren. Lauren's in China, and she made it. Yes. Okay, we're going to put you on very very shortly. Um, I just want to talk about this global partnership that I've been part of for the past three years. Um, I've been in education for over 30 years, and I've witnessed programs and projects of all kinds come and go. Some were whims of experimental learning, while others have taken stronghold in our educational system to ensure consistency and equity. But none can compare to this rich experience and the depth of understanding that uh, was acquired through traveling abroad and becoming immersed in another culture. So before we get started, I want to tell just a little short story about me. I was a product of American culture growing up in the 60s and 70s. I was not introduced to a second language when I was young. And though I attended a private school, I learned about the world through a lens that I didn't realize was there. Learning became important to me to grow beyond my limited imagination. And I was the first in my extended family to get a degree in college and in, college and in education. And as a young teacher, I was assigned to teach what I thought was a close your ears, Denise, a dreadful subject, social studies. <laughs> you can laugh. You can press the laugh button there. So I tried to make it meaningful and fun by inviting guest speakers and promoting projects to learn about the world. One adventurous project project was for students to create a colorful chalk drawing on the sidewalk around the school building uh, of countries around the world to begin to create global awareness. This was in 93. You can see 1993 in the 90s. We all learned so much, like Czech Republic like was just separating from Slovakia, becoming independent with its own flag. But that wasn't in the textbook because it was outdated. So just prior to that, was an explosion of technology. That's when Friedman's bestseller was uh, released and discussed the Internet's impact on globalization. And then came along Julie Lindsay, who's here, and Nikki Davis' global project for students for flat classroom using Web 2.0 tools to connect students around the world. And the following year, 2006, at um, have to admit, back then, age 50 was my first experience traveling beyond this continent to Berlin, Germany, and Prague, Czech Republic. That was 10 years after that chalk drawing of the flags. I uh, was privileged to travel with 62 educators to write global curriculum, and Lucy Gray was among us. She returned to create this amazing global community, and I vowed to travel to a different country every year after and bring global awareness to my classroom. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Honey, Lucy, thanks for admitting that, that your age. Um, traveling, here's, here's the thing, and I'm saying this, and I'm going to say it clearly. Traveling abroad was the catalyst that allowed me to discard my deeply ingrained ethnocentric mindset and begin my mission of why I believe we're all here today. And also, I want to add the book to the chat box, uh, World. This is another book that really was, um, uh, and impacted me, World Class Learners by Yong Zhao. And there's another book for you. So uh, that's a little background information on me. Um, I'd like to know a little bit about you. 
And so I'm gonna, I'm, we're gonna do a quick poll, and then I am gonna uh, give time to the two students who have taken time to come in. Oh, Lauren just stepped away, so I'll get her when she comes back. Uh, we're gonna use the poll feature here. Let, let's see, do I have to enable that feature, Lucy? Or everybody can already do it. I'm not a great poll person. Um, I don't think you need to. I think you, um, you asked the yeah, question. Yeah, everybody. And yeah. then they mouse over the check box above in the participants window. Okay. So you see a check box, and when you pull it down, you're going to see yes or no. Here's your first question. Have you, as an educator, traveled abroad for study take, or taken students abroad for study? Yes or no? Thanks, Lauren. We're going to we're going to check you in in a minute. I promise. As soon as we do this poll, um, so yes or no, and, tra and vacation doesn't count unless you're on a formal tour. So we'll give you a, minute, a few minutes to yes or no. As an educator, you've traveled abroad for study or taken students abroad for study. Feel free to list um, some of the places you've traveled to in the chat box. It's in the participants window, um, which is to the left, and it's right underneath my name as a moderator. Maybe your name is up there as a participant. It's right underneath there. It looks like a check box, and then there's a pull-down menu, and you can select a green check or a red X. Hope you guys can find it. Yeah, we have a few. We're almost tied here. I'm going to give you another couple of seconds. Ooh, great places you've all traveled to. Okay, so now, based on the answers, it looks like a tie. Let me post these. Let's see, I can get, pull, I'll pull, post, publish the response here. This is what we have so far. So out of 27, about 30% of you have not. 30% of you have, and none. A couple of you couldn't find that check box. Maybe you can find it this time. Let's try one more. Let me clear that poll, and we're just going to do one more. Have you? How many of you have, or yes or no, have you provided students with opportunities for international collaboration virtually? Yes or no? And I'll give more people time to vote. And after this, I am going to turn over to Anya and let her talk a little bit, and then Lauren, because they are up on, uh, well, Lauren's checking in from China, and uh, Anya is up late on the East Coast for a school night. Yay! We got lots of answers coming in this time, yes or no. Okay, let's publish what we have so far on this one. So this is actually, uh, this is virtual. Over here. And this is um, the other ones just basically in reality traveling abroad. So that brings us to uh, my story. Why, why I'm here today. And before I actually um, talk to you about this trip and this program that I've been a part of for three years, I am going to ask Anya, I'm going to turn the mic over to Anya, she's still with us, because Anya was one of the students who traveled with us to China last summer. And Lauren, traveled to China two summers ago, and she's actually back in China right now. So I'm excited to have her joining, join us. So let me start with Anya. Anya, just I'm going to ask you to take the mic and just share from your heart what it meant to you in a few words. Um, can everyone hear me? Um, so... Yeah, this past summer, I went to China for six weeks total, um, and I originally was interested in the program because I'm 
really interested in both STEM and I also take Chinese in school, um, but I never really expected the program to be as fulfilling as it was. Um, and I made so many friends with Chinese college students and the language classes that I took in China were so much more in depth and interesting than what I've experienced in the US. Um, and I also gained a bunch of new perspectives on green energy um, solutions and kind of compared them between the US and China, which was really interesting. Um, and it's definitely something that I want to continue researching um, as I go on to college next year. Um, and yeah, I think it's definitely an experience that I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. And um, I, it definitely made me want to continue to study abroad and travel all over the world. Thank you so much, Anya. I can't even tell you how grateful I am that you took time on a school night, late East Coast time, to come out and share your experience. And later in this uh, presentation, I'm going to take you out to live uh, YouTube video for Anya's presentation that she did on the Green City. Uh, very exciting. So, um, Anya, good night. Have a great week and uh, hopefully uh, we'll chat again. I want to now, uh, Lucy, if you could help me give the microphone. Oh, you've already done it. Thank you. Lauren Thornburg in China from two years ago. Would you tell us your story? We just click on the little mic icon and great job overcoming those technical difficulties. That's the T in step. Can everyone hear me? How Joe Bujian? Niama. Hello, hi. I am actually on the metro right now. So uh, I'm not disturbing anyone, though, because as we know, the metro is a pretty loud place no matter where you are. I hope everyone can hear me. Okay. Oh, good. Everyone can hear me. So, in 2016, I studied abroad in Hong Kong, and now I live in Beijing, China. And so, last, uh, well, I keep saying last summer, it was, uh, our focus of study was, as Anya said, green and renewable energy. Um, however, now, this time that I've come to China, I am no longer studying green and renewable energy. In fact, I'm actually working. I am a home educator, child English, uh, the age of three English lessons, Chinese lessons, and they provide tons of different cultural activities and all kinds of things. So if anyone is interested in taking a gap year or even just a summer break in China, the shortest duration is three months. I would definitely recommend this program. Uh, the agency is unbelievably accommodating, and the experience has been amazing. I will be living here until May of 2018, and all I can say is that living in this country has been an absolute dream. Thank you. Uh, I have looked at that. Yeah, I've looked at the website that Lucy just sent. I've just looked at it, though. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren, so very much for taking time. I know it's uh, like early in the morning over there. Uh, now we're on a little bit of not exactly 12 hours difference. So what is it, like 11, 21, something like that, a.m.? Anyway. We're going to get, get on with it. I know you've got plenty business to do, so take care. And, again, I am so grateful. And um, I'll see you on WeChat. Bye-bye. So um, let, let's get back to this partnership. You know, whether you take your student abroad for study or you provide virtual opportunities for partnerships, there are specific strategies that, you, that can lead to success. The Delaware Chinese Links Program is a partnership that took tremendous 
<laughs> You're welcome. Uh, tremendous teamwork, meticulous planning, coordination by officials, dozens of volunteer student ambassadors, and an amazing collaboration between our students and teachers from Delaware, and many people involved from Beijing, Hangzhou, and Shanghai. This website that you see and that uh, Lucy shared the link to has all the resources and links that I'll be sharing with you today in uh, this presentation. As I mentioned earlier, I was not introduced to a language at an early age, and I've been struggling as an adult learner to learn a second language. A little bit of language, a little bit of Chinese, trying to struggle. But world language proficiency and cultural competency, I know we have people from all over the world here, and they're 21st century skills that define college, career, and world-ready graduates. In Delaware, World language capacity is important for the state to maintain strengthen and strengthen its domestic economy. Our state legislators publicly support the importance of young Delawareans learning a world language. Yeah, we're that really small state on the East Coast, Atlantic, Mid-Atlantic, and um, so the Delawareans are, are now, um, we have more immersion programs happening in our state, and uh, we recognize that high school students graduate, uh, high school student graduates who enter the job market without the ability to speak a world language other than English are at a significant disadvantage. And so if you agree with that, would you raise your hand? There's a little hand icon on the side. Just raise your hand if you agree. Mm. Yeah. So this morning I listened to, thank you, you can put your hands down and I appreciate it. Uh, I think we all agree about that. And Michael Furdock, uh, keynote this morning from Taking It Global, uh, discussed the top 10 skills for 2020, which this experience authentically targets. The partnership focuses on language, skills, culture, and STEM, which is how and why this project was initiated. So this partnership was in support of the China Strong Initiative. A Chinese corporation, Wang Shang, was seeking investment in Delaware to build an electric vehicle facility. The Delaware Department of Education then established a partnership with Wanshan officials. And the Wanshan Polytechnic University in Hangzhou, and thus the strategic planning began. After traveling three years to China in support of Wanshan and Delaware Partnership, let me begin by sharing a few ways the program has proven to be most successful. First, this program has grown in students by, by 30, in numbers by 30%. Now, I know this is a small amount, especially compared to some of those huge global projects, projects out there that are happening. But for Delaware Small State, we um, allowed 75 students from over the state in the past three years to experience more learning in one month than compared to one year of traditional study. And that does not even include the number of Chinese ambassadors involved. And here's a picture coming up of Lauren on the left. She returned to China as a tutor. We heard her a little bit earlier. In the middle, these are three of the students who participated in years one and two who returned to China. Um, the middle uh, fellow traveled back to China to visit friends and share experiences at the college. And the third fellow on the right, he actually earned a full scholarship to a university in Zhejiang, uh, China. Student ambassadors from our program have been highlighted in China Strong Publications for their work in continuing to promote China study. And there's Lauren again. She's an ambassador. Several of the Chinese student ambassadors then visited the United States. And three of them were accepted to study at the University of Delaware. 
100% of the student projects have been successfully published in an interactive book created each year of the program. Many of those projects propose viable solutions to environmental problems based on credible research. Most students are still communicating with friends in China. I mean, I just called out to Lauren just a little earlier today, actually, and she popped in to see us from China. But they're using social media such as Facebook, Instagram, and WeChat, which I'll be talking to you a little bit about later. There's a little screenshot from our WeChat. It's a phenomenal app. So partnerships require collaboration and planning, and I'll quickly go through a few key points in planning, but I'm really going to focus on the learning outcomes and those, those, those story, the, the student stories and uh, the outcomes for the students. And I'm going to allow some time for discussion on how partnerships can continue to be created and sustained. And then we have the who and the what and the where and the why and the how all part of the strategic planning. And it begins with the application process to help identify and select candidates who demonstrate interest and commitment. Minimum qualifying criteria includes a transcript, application, uh, teacher recommendations from a, uh, for a language teacher and a counselor, and then an interview. Um, I do have a rubric for the interview. If anyone is interested, um, it's linked on, I believe it's linked on the site. Um, the rubric can be, yeah, found on our website. And there was also an application process for our teacher chaperones who consisted of three Chinese language teachers and three STEM teachers. I represented the T in STEM technology, as well as taking a leadership role for the past two years. And this essay prompt. These essay prompts were the seeds on the application that really inspired the student collaboration, research, and data collection for the meaningful projects, which we will uh, examine a little bit later. So now it's your turn to share. Another little interactive, interactive activity here, if you will. I'm going to turn over the draw to the interactive whiteboard here to everyone so you can get that text tool and go ahead and type what things would you do to prepare learners for global travel. Okay, can everybody grab that? There you go. Take virtual tours using Google Earth. Awesome. Encourage, yep, teach. If you have a pen tool, you use stylus you or a mouse and you feel comfortable using the uh, pen tool, you can go ahead and, and jot. Jot in here like an interactive whiteboard. Teach them how to write a journal. Good. I just want to hear what you would do to prepare your learners, whether it's virtual or in reality. Research. Good. Good. Before. Yeah. Background information. Yes. That seems like a consensus of the group. Mm, virtual field trips and augmented reality, very easily at our fingertips. And learning the language, that's what inspired me. The first year I went, I knew no Chinese. Um, I came back and I decided I, I needed to learn it. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to go back two more years. And I'd like to do what Lauren does and did and actually go over there and stay for a while. So we're getting some really good ideas, and I really appreciate your sharing. 
maybe having some issues writing. Okay, well, we're going to clear the whiteboard now and move on. I think I can see, clear the whiteboard. Okay, I know there's a way to do that. Okay, text box works. If it stays on the next slide, we have to do something. To, okay, that works. All right. So um, let me go back. So when you take a group of students halfway around the world, 13,000 kilometers or 7,000 miles to be specific, planes, trains, and buses, there's so many details to pay attention to in preparation. Some of these students in this group have met, in our group, never even traveled outside of their own neighborhoods, let alone to another country. Uh, so, um, to prepare, so, so we had two pre-travel orientation days set up to invite students and their parents, and a lot of um, pre-planning took place. Here's what we did. I'll share a few tips with you. Uh, team building activities. These were these students were from schools around the state, and so many didn't know each other. It was important that they get along, especially since they were sharing accommodations. So we had some icebreakers and Chinese, of course, and team building activities um, helped in building uh, trust and strength. And actually, I have one to share with you, and I can shoot it out as a. I think I can. Share this file real quick. It's awesome. Uh, one of our teachers actually uh, created this. Let's see if I can get this. It's called Community Skiing. So I think it's going to come out to you right now as a document. And it really builds trust and um, strengthens purpose, strengthen the purpose to our trip. Did you get that one? Obviously, data needs to be collected, so a baseline assessment on language skills was administered. Um, this is what we use. Some of you are probably already familiar with this. Um, more than that, the students receive their results and they set personal growth goals. And we also have the global can-do benchmarks if you'd like to um, receive that, it's on our website. So a lot of you mentioned do some research, set some background information. That's what we did. This little thin paperback contains 5,000 years of China. <laughs> so we assigned um, uh, chapter four, which was really China today, and broke up into groups and had uh, roundtable discussions. All the student work displayed can be found um, at this link uh, that's takes you again to our website with the blog. This particular um, uh, work from student, a student group was on the topic of Guanxi. And I wanted to take a minute to talk about Guanxi because uh, this is um, part of the language and the culture of China is, um, it, it's hard to explain in English, but it's basically building relationships, building relationships between people, partners, and in China the culture is, you know, celebrating through a tea ceremony and building that relationship that will make a better business partnership. I'm not going to get too much into that, but you can go to that and read it yourself. Some of the other areas of planning included items on the list. I'll tell you, my experiences after three years led to no stern, stone unturned, like making sure kids turn off their cell phone data plans so they don't get charged international uh, charges, or something simple as keeping a luggage claim check ticket in case the luggage gets lost. One thing I found interesting 
in, I was kind of reading the chat over here too. Nice. Um, in, in China, I have to mention that current, we did talk about currency exchange, and that's really important because um, obviously kids that are staying that long are going to want to purchase things. But mo mostly what I found in Hangzhou is um, currency isn't used very much at all. Uh, Alipay is huge over there, and it's an app where you just scan and pay. Uh, similar to Apple Pay, but I'll talk a little bit about WeChat later as well for um, mobile commerce. So these are just some of the details. And after traveling abroad, again, or I'm sorry, again, traveling abroad or collaborating virtually, it's really important to consider the technology that works in the corresponding country. This is so important because you just don't think about that. You think, oh, let's just use a Google Doc. Well, unfortunately, some countries block sites, and we as educators know even some of our schools filter sites. WeChat is a social media app used throughout China, and it allows face-to-face -face video calls for free. It's fabulous. It works really, really great on Wi-Fi. It, it allows for voice chat, QR codes, purchasing items through um, uh, uh, mobile commerce, and uh, or calling an Uber, getting a geocache location, sharing photos and documents. And what we did is we created groups. We created uh, a total group for all the parents, guardians, students, chaperones, and teachers to communicate in case we needed them. That was a lot of uh, interaction. And then we created just like smaller groups for just the students. If we had to send out a message to, you know, wear a certain shirt, t-shirt a certain day or meet in the lobby at a certain time for class. Um, it, it's just, it's a fabulous app that I uh, truly recommend to everyone uh, to try out with your, with your um, uh, global partners wherever you decide to um, work with. And here are some other apps that work well globally, I found. Um, for example, uh, some other streaming music apps don't work at all in other countries. Uh, I was disappointed to find out that mine didn't, but I then uh, adopted um, Spotify, which works really well if you want to stream music. Um, a VPN, ExpressVPN is one of my favorites. It can be used to connect to a server in a different country and bypass the firewalls which is how these Chinese students can get to YouTube and uh, Google uh, and, and other, other places. However, uh, in some cases, then the local sites will block, uh, with, will be blocked with a VPN on. So it's a little tricky. But um, if you want to take a minute, just share a couple of your favorite apps. Pleco is a great Chinese dictionary, and of course, a world currency converter is always important. I found Shutterfly to be uh, a great picture sharing site, and that's how we made our book. Uh, but if you have any favorite, um, what's well, not really? Oh, okay. Well, you know, you have to have those kind of apps for, like, uh, scannable for. Instagram, but Instagram, oh yeah, I don't know if Instagram, I don't think Instagram, uh, you have to use the VPN for Instagram in China. So let's take a look at the program itinerary because it was rigorous. I think there's a little hand tool over here I can get, but I'll just save time and talk about the um, the, the, this was a 28-day trip, a whole entire month, and you can see in the three days ahead, we uh, were just acclimation time and more of a tourist uh, view of China. And then we went, um, traveled to Hangzhou, where we stayed at the Wanshang Polytech University for 21 days for our intense study. And um, then uh, we took a bus back to Wuxian and uh, did a Shanghai tour for three days before we left the country to come home. So here, I'm going to give you a lot of pictures to tell the story. 
So the first three days were in uh, Beijing, touring some of the major sites like the Great Wall, Tiananmen Square, Forbidden City, taking a rickshaw ride. Then we moved to Hangzhou, where we went to museums like the uh, Shishi Natural Na National Wetland, which was uh, more for ecology. Uh, there were some performances they were able to see culturally, like the Song Dynasty, and then. Then we ended up in Shanghai um, on Nanjing Street and uh, touring the, the Pearl Tower and some other famous landmarks there. They were the travel excursions. And these were the cultural seminars. These were in Hangzhou. There's 21 days uh, spread out throughout where some of these um, wonderful experiences for the kids, the dough sculpture, the calligraphy, making dumplings. For each of these actual hands-on experience, there was a seminar presented with information, which made it really valuable. And of course, most mornings were filled with three hours of language classes, Chinese. And then there was the focus of the STEM. So the professors at the Wanshan Polytech University were PhDs who studied worldwide, and they were active in China's plan and recent development in clean energy, including the research director of en environment and energy engaged in China's energy legislation and policy drafting, and a project consultant. So these were the focuses of electric vehicles, solar power, wind power, geothermal energy, and so forth. So for each seminar, again, there was a related field experience, even in history, philosophy, government, and economics. So for example, we learned about the social development and the anti-poverty works in China, and then that afternoon we'd go to the field study of international trade city in Yiwu, which is the largest international market in the world, which is ap application of what these uh, students learned. And then there was a lot of time for study and, uh, sorry, I went pretty quickly on that one. Get back to that one. Students conducted, whoops, I went the wrong way. Did I go the wrong way? Previous page. There was plenty of time for conducting interviews and collecting data for their projects. Everything was documented because I was the T for technology. <laughs> uh, community involvement and community service is a very big part of China culture, Chinese culture. And so we, as part of the culture, we had a, a community performance. Anya is actually up there dancing in front. She took the lead to coordinate the song and the dance, along with some other talented students. Um, they got to really demonstrate all their, their strengths. We had a tree planting ceremony that represented long-lasting friendships, friendships between the two countries. We visited a nursing home, and one of the most successful events was the family visit, where students went with the family for the day to experience home life in China. And then there were the field excursion mini projects. So Family Day Documentary. This was an individual project where they took pictures of events, that they, activities they did with their families, and then narrated it in Chinese. Uh, the Chinese had some criteria based on the classes that they had that day. Um, the cuisine museum reflection. We went to a cuisine. We went to a cuisine museum, and they had to find three of their favorite foods and then describe them in Chinese. And most of these, all of these videos are on our YouTube channel. I'm going to take you out to one now, the uh, Art Museum Reflection video, to show you. Uh, this one doesn't have closed caption, but basically the students went to the museum and they selected um, a particular piece of artwork that maybe um, uh, spoke out to them that they really were interested in, and they described it in Chinese. So let's take a little virtual tour here of this video for your pleasure. We'll just take a few minutes. I'm only going to take you to the beginning. Hopefully you'll get this.
Okay, so that's something that you can go out to the YouTube channel. Let's talk a little bit about the learning uh, outcome, and I'm going to take you back to the YouTube channel. Okay, sure. I can teach you how to do that. I'm going to volunteer for some of the classes. I'm having so much fun. Um, so what's most important is the learning outcome. What will the learners gain for themselves and bring back for others? Um, at the, the audience just add in there that uh, administrators from the school also came. But this was a purpose to demonstrate their understanding of this immersion experience. And it was really broken up with uh, three, three, into three areas. They picked their own topic. And this, these were the broad topics. They really, it was based on project-based learning and a little bit of Barbara Bray's design thinking, where they would um, actually um, do the research. They picked their, these are broad categories, and they narrowed it down. But basically, American versus Chinese perspectives on green energy solution, the language skills as an advantage for college and career options, or American and Chinese cultural differences and ways to facilitate cooperation and collaboration. So here are a few of the published book, a few of the projects from the published book and some of the technology students use to produce their final presentations. This is all on our YouTube channel, and of course, because YouTube isn't always available in China, some of this is on Yoku, which is their YouTube channel. But now I'm going to take you out, and I want to really, um, I know I'm coming close to the end. I want to give you time for questions, but I am going to show you a good part of Anya's because it's really very authentic with authentic footage, uh, and you heard from her er earlier today. So if you'll give me a moment, I'm going to take you out to the YouTube video. Uh, again, this is Anya's on Green Cities. Okay, sorry to cut that off, but we are getting close to the end, and I know you're going to go back and you're going to want to see more. But let's get going further in. I want to talk to you about several years ago, Delaware had voted down an offshore wind farm 13 miles off the East Coast. Denise knows about this. She's, Denise is my friend from Delaware. She teaches also education, and she loves history. So thanks, Denise, for being here. Um, 
So anyway, this was a um, this was a project that failed, and I put this slide in here at the last minute because I wanted to share with you that in 2015, uh, Delaware the, the project about wind farms offshore failed. In 2011, in 2015, students got back from China and presented their findings on China's wind farm initiatives and proposals to legislators at the governor's reception. And just a few months ago, our governor took a major step towards encouraging the development of an offshore wind farm. And this is the actual, uh, I know it's a little small snapshot, but this is the from Delaware Online News about the efforts to explore this um, this uh, project again for green energy. Now, is it a coincidence? Did the kids really influence the legislators? I don't know. But, you know, what happens here is students' voice matters. And what's really more important is that they're going to become of age to voice their opinions with background information and be informed about what's best for our world. And I just want to share that because it seems like a direct correlation of their presentation may or may not be a coincidence. So finally, here is the YouTube channel of Pure Secure Code. This is linked from that original website that we sent out. And um, I agree with you in the chat about empowering to try to influence legislators, yes, whether or not they can persuade them, absolutely. But here is, there all the, I really encourage you to go out and, and take a look because you can see they hit all the topics, not just the green energy solutions, but there's the cultural aspects. Uh, and then the advantage of learning a language. I'm so excited and I really do hope that you'll go out to that channel. Now, let me just wrap it up by saying we also did a post-assessment post and debriefing. This is always important. Uh, we did the Delta Plus chart and uh, some other charts. And, of course, then you can use the cool app, sticky notes, to put this all together. I just pulled a few quotes here for you to look at. Uh, and also the, uh, the uh, data from the assessment proved an increase in proficiency levels of their language, raising one to two levels. So that was pretty impressive as well. Um, finally, we had a showcase recognition. Tabletop presentation, presentations were showcased at the final reception held by a regional energy company, Blooms Energy, where legislators, business leaders, school administration, and parents gathered to celebrate the program. Certificates were issued, and 10 ambassadors were nominated to promote the global, uh, par continue pr promoting the global partnership. So one photo is worth a thousand words. And this is why the program, programs like this must continue. This is a photo at the end of our trip. Students from the U.S. and China were bonded in friendship, and Guanxi will continue to develop. So what can we do to create and sustain these global partnerships? Coming together in an online forum such as the GEC is an amazing event to network, make connections, support these exchange programs. You can please feel free to share your ideas in the chat. Um, you know, I, I, I realize you're not all going to have these great grant opportunities to take students abroad, but, you know, we still need to seek that State Department support from and encourage the State Departments of Education to support us and our corporations and legislators and just write grants, but this, this is a reality. I mean, I still get a little choked up when I look at this picture. This was in the lobby just before we left Hangzhou, and the kids didn't want to leave. They were just, and you know, they just really bonded, and um, there, there's so much to be said for creating that um, part, just individual partnerships in the world as well as um, in groups. So, here are a couple of other organizations our schools have been involved with, and so, so many I'm looking forward to learning about uh, this week through the sessions. Pen Pal Schools is awesome. It has a Facebook page. 
Uh, we just started Global Read Aloud Choices, um, and that helps us to get Twitter open in our elementary schools. Uh, I've worked with Peace Corps Worldwide Schools, which is awesome with authentic projects, and of course there's Taking It Global, I Earn, and so many other wonderful programs we can be a part of. So thank you so much for your time and, uh, and, and attending. Please connect with me. Here are my um, social network uh, sites and uh, my QR code for WeChat. <laughs> so I guess this is time for questions. Uh, we have a little bit of time. Two minutes. Not much time. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I over. Um, we've got like two minutes, so I'll ask the question really quickly. What would you, if a, if a school or district were interested in growing a program, where would you start? What would your advice be to them? And I have to apologize if my mic was on earlier. I was in Martin's room and your video started and I was like multitasking and got flustered. So if the if you heard me, sorry. Oh, that's, anyway, that's okay. Where would you good to know you're, you're human because I think you're superhuman doing all this work. Um, you know, it, it starts small, it takes a village. I think places like this are good to start. Uh, in, in, I like to go into classrooms, like I'll take the, the global read aloud to grow that kind of program. Uh, do you mean just growing it within the district or growing it connecting around the world? I guess the partnership piece. I mean, I think that um, it's an easy, it's a, it's an easier reach to do some established projects. So, but you guys have obviously established relationships with people in other countries, well, particularly in China, you know, other organizations and schools. Is there, how did you do that? I mean, did you, how did you find the people that you went to, to see? Yeah, well, that was through the State Department. That was through the Department of Education. Um, and, and actually businesses. I think we need to start with getting support from businesses and universities because it's the people in the universities, the, the officials that, number one, they're the ones with the deep pockets for funding and they also will benefit from, from this, you know, partners with corporations. So I would say start with, um, you know, other than grant writing, because StarTalk program gave us a grant opportunity to have uh, some global connections. Um, but I, I would say this list right here is probably the best way to start. Hopefully that will help. Because I don't think I'm going to have this program again next year, but I'm seeking another, uh, another one. So just making those connections. And I believe our session is ending. So thank you so much, everyone, for attending. I really appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. And pretty soon um, the room is going to close. So we're going to ask you to go ahead and leave the chat. And once again, thank you so much. My apologies for uh, as that bounced out of here. Thank you again so much, Lori, for coming and sharing your expertise with us. And I hope that you will take this and tell your story in other places because I think it's really compelling, um, particularly for districts to think about um, how they're going to go about this and what possibilities are available in places. And more administrators need to kind of get, you know, get an idea of what it looks like so that they can help make it happen. So your, your thoughts and insights are very valuable. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy, for all that you do. And I hope to, to see you again this week. Thanks, everybody.